crowdfund for Blades 2 Electric Boogaloo. It makes me wonder if this document was even real or if this is a complete and utter troll. The world is just illusion, trying to change you. Well, I've read quite a bit of this agreement, and I gotta say, it doesn't seem legal, it doesn't seem real, it doesn't seem like this thing will have any sense on the actual market space of D&D and uh open gaming overall like everything i got to say like this, this this agreement is there's no way there there's no way this would hold up in a court of law there i i can't see it um there's stuff like you cannot uh take in part in a class action lawsuit against wizards for this um there there some language in there in the comments section that they've added in there saying if you put in bigoted sexism uh blatant racism all all of these things that can be abused and interpreted very differently uh dependent on the person that actually reads it, it, it it's something that has to be proven in a court of law and i don't think it's very easy to prove things like this in a court of law. Defamation is one thing, but when it comes to personal actions and uh, what you put into your adventures for a stereotype or or tropes or something that is seen negatively reflective on society, it's subjective to the mind's eye and subjected to, the, like, looking at art. Art is subjective, and so is this type of language for the type of thing that they want to put in there. Going through this, I I just I, I I'm left with questions. I I wonder if this is even legitimate. However, I do have to say I went and looked at the Wizards of the Coast current OGL that is online, and they actually have in the current version, they have the name OGL 1.1 in the address line. So this is something else that I start to question what is actually going on. Okay, well, this thing is 15 pages long, about 9,000 words long. I've already read a little bit of the excerpts out of this uh, that were leaked online. Now this is the whole thing being leaked. It's everywhere right now. This just doesn't seem like it's even legal in in some cases here january what is it january 13th i believe is where i saw that somewhere um they talk about the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. if you're making that and above you're going to end up paying 20 to 25 percent uh, of a royalty towards wizards of the coast um and that takes effect january 1st 2024 january 1st 2024 is a very interesting date because 2024 is the 50th year of D and D. It was made in 1974. Was when it originally was there. Um, so these the agreement doesn't take effect until January 13th, 2003, which is Friday. That coincides when Wizards of the Coast usually announce big deals like this, a big contracts or something that they know is going to create a community backlash over it. They, they usually do it on a Friday afternoon when everyone's going home and they that way they don't have to deal with it until Monday morning. This is something they've done several times in the past. So they're updating it, saying they're dividing it into a commercial and non-commercial terms. The major one here is what's covered. Uh, so content covered, usable D&D content, licensed content. This is D&D &D content that includes the SRD 5.1, so anything um, version 5 and beyond, uh, including basic game mechanics and curated sections of classes, monsters, spells, and items that you will allow you to make content compatible with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition not usable D, D content unlicensed content this is D, &D uh, content that has been or later will be produced as official that is released by wizards of the coast or any of the predecessors or successors and is not represented in the srd 5.1 unlicensed content including things like the most famous D, D monsters characters magic spells and things relating to various settings used in dungeons and dragons official content over the years that they're talking beholders mind flayers melsaf's acid arrow like actual named they're talking about settings like forgotten realms your content. These are the characters, classes, spells, settings, 
items, new rules, and other creations you have crafted. They are your original contribution to the works that you want to sell. The license permits you to combine your content with the licensed content and commercially distribute the resulting works. Works covered. The license only applies to materials you create for use in or as role-playing games and as game supplements or and only as printed media and static electronic files such as EPUBs or PDFs. It does not allow the distribution of any other form of media that and does not apply to creation of anything else. So to be clear, OGL non-commercial only allows for the creation of role-playing games and supplements in media and printed media and static electronic file formats. It does not allow for anything else, including but not limited to things like videos, virtual tabletops, VTT campaigns, computer games, novels, gra apps, graphic novels, music, songs, dances, and paddle mines. So the reason why the non-commercial doesn't cover any of those, because they are seen as a commercial entity. So if you're making a video on D&D, &D, they're saying that is now a commercial entity. But this is under a comments part, not necessarily in the legal jargon. Uh, you may engage in these activities only to the extent to allowed under Wizards fan content policy or separately agreed between you and us. Under the fan content policy, that's where streaming things like MTG Arena, Magic the Gathering Arena, was allowed as long as you obeyed the rules of the game, didn't exploit it, yada, yada, yada. The license work uh, for work licensed under the OGL non-commercial, it must meet four of the following. It qualifies as covered works as section uh, defined in section IB. It contains both licensed content and your content, meaning you're adding something to it. It does not contain unlicensed content. So I guess if you're borrowing from someone else's campaign, I, 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 that's something that will be, someone will have to explain that a little bit more. Uh, it con contains the text, open game license, non-commercial within the body of the work. So if you're printing something to hand out, they're telling you, you have to put somewhere on there, OGL non-commercial as part of it for it to stay non-commercial. So you have to identify it. Now, this is all subject to accepting this agreement, but in order to accept this agreement, pretty much you just got to make content towards it. And then you're saying you're accepting the agreements. It's it, it's far overreaching. The, the Wizards fan content policy has always had certain things in there where you got to make sure it's free and all these other things. And I don't know, a lot of it has been overreaching. Now, they're saying in here, donations, your distribution of your work must be non-commercial. That means you cannot require that anyone give you anything of value in exchange for your work or copies of your work. However, you are permitted to accept donations through Patreon, Kofi, and other similar platforms, provided that the donations are not a condition to, uh, to receive your work. And you must make it clear and you're obvious to your donors. In other words, if you make your work available for free and ask others to contribute what they like to you so that you can continue to do so, you're fine. But if you, any of your work is available to subscribers or patrons only, meaning you cannot paywall it, uh, or in any other word for people who give you money for access to it, then your, your non-free work is subject to the OGL commercial and all of its income is revenue under that license. Meaning then you have to submit it to Wizards of the Coast, they have to approve it, everything else, and that is covered in here. Okay, well, the, the beginning of the stuff is all general legal stuff. It's laying down the ground rules. I don't think that's where I need to spend a lot of time on. So I'm going to try and skip forward to the stuff that is very questionable in the long run. Termination. This agreement may be modified or terminated. Uh, uh, modification. This agreement is, along with the OGL commercial, an update to the previous available OGL 1.0A, which is no longer authorized license agreement. We can modify or terminate, yada, yada, yada. We may terminate the agreement immediately if you infringe upon or misuse our intellectual property, violate laws in relationship to your activities under the agreement uh you breach any other term or condition in this agreement and that breach is not cured within 30 days of uh, 
of our providing notice of the breach, meaning they will send you a cease and desist. And if you don't oblige by that, the termination is uh, is gone. Uh, you bring action challenging our ownership of the licensed content, unlicensed content, or any patent or trademark owned by Wizards of the Coast. This agreement is null and void the second you bring action to them through the court system. I don't think that's legal. Uh, you may terminate this agreement at any time by ceasing all distribution of your licensed work and providing us with a written notice. So if you're making licensed work under this agreement, in order for you to terminate it yourself, you must supply Wizards of the Coast with a written notice saying it's done. That, that, that's normal, but the one before that where if you're challenging the ownership over the license agreement. Now, this I believe is covering the uh, intellectual property, but the second you go into the court, it's then null and void. I, I still think there's some standing there, and I think Wizards of the Coast still would want to say this agreement is licensed under it, even though it could be some very minor dispute. We know this may come off strong, but it is important. If you attempt to use the OGL as a basis to release blatantly racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, bigoted, or otherwise discriminatory comment, content, or anything we think triggers these provisions, your content is no longer licensed. To be clear, we want to and always will support creators who are using the OGL to help them explore sensitive subjects in a positive manner. We will not tolerate materials we consider to be in any way counter to the spirit of D&D. &D. Additionally, you waive your right to sue over our decision on these issues. We're aware that, that if we somehow stretch our decision of what is is or is not objectable under these clauses too far, we will receive community pushback and bad PR. Well, you already got that right now. And we're more than open to being convinced that we made the wrong decision, but nobody gets to use the threat of a lawsuit as part of an attempt to convene, convince us you're not allowed to threaten a lawsuit, uh, blatantly racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, bigoted, and otherwise discriminatory content. Unfortunately, can it is ripe for abuse and can seen be seen as subjective. That 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 is something we have seen up and down, where one person says one thing and one person says another. It comes down to an ethical and uh, it comes down to a conundrum that has been debated to and from. Like there are people on both sides of the aisle that debate this up and down at what is the ethical standard of these things. Twitter accounts online that believe they're doing things that they, they want to do as the correct action and then they get called transphobic or homophobic because certain people believe that that's what they are and they're not that. It, it does come down to you've got to prove some of these things in court and then and not in the public square. This is a legal document and not a public square sort of scenario. The public square is a very interesting thing to encapsulate into something like this. It's even part of the fan content policy. If someone makes a joke that's in bad light, then suddenly they get cancelled for it. And this is perpetuating what we know as cancel culture. And it's not a good way to live your life and it's not a good way to continue to go on with that. Uh, when Wizards of the Coast brought out the updated version of the Hazo D. They everyone went crazy about it, saying it was racist when it was like akin to Planet of the Apes of something that the, Wizards of the Coast has always taken things that have gone big in pop culture and moved it into their games. They've always done this. This is something that they skirt the line so close to it. It's the whole artist's rendition of, if you can't make your own, you always steal it. And that's what Wizards of the Coast has always done with everything in their, in, in their entity. They've created a bunch of stuff alongside of it, but a lot of what they've created has also 
been spurred on from ideas from other things. Dungeons and Dragons itself was inspired by Lord of the Rings. There's a lot there. It, it, it comes down to where's art, where's the line, where, and the line is ever moving goalposts. And that's the problem that a lot of people are seeing with this, including myself, because those goalposts are forever moving and you never know at what point you're going to cross that line. Next little bit here, it's kind of a rehash of the same thing, but into the commercial side instead of the non-commercial side. The one thing that they add here is you will put a content creator badge on it to identify it as a content creation under the commercial agreement. Leveling up, uh, this agreement covers all commercial uses, whether profitable or not. Note, if you appear to have achieved great success that is consistently meeting or exp exceeding the expert tier qualification below you, from producing OGL content, commercial content, we may reach out to you for more custom and manual beneficial licensing arrangements, such as we see with Critical Role. Why the tiers? For one thing, it's Dungeons and Dragons and even our lawyers play. It's possible we're not actually sure how to design something without someone, some form of leveling up. But also, we're trying to minimize the burden on our creators as much as possible. As you see below, you're, you're in the initiate tier. We all, we all we need from you is some basic information about you, what you've created and offering for sale. Once your work is, your work way, once you work your way through the intermediate tier, we'll ask you to provide actual financial reporting so you, so that we can see whether royalties are due. Reaching the expert tier means you will pay us royalties on your revenue over $750,000. If you're doing incredibly well, you might level up to a custom license. Registration, no matter what tier you are or how much money you believe your product will make, you must register with us any new license work you intend to offer for sale. Good luck enforcing this. Uh, by going into insert detail, filling out the form here. You make an adventure. You, you, you put it out there. You, you do something amazing with it. You don't intend on licensing it. Then your friends go, you know what? That was a really good adventure. Why don't you license it? You start printing it out for your friends. Your friends say, oh, you know what? I'll pay you to print it out. Now you're in the commercial tier all of a sudden, right? And what do you do at this point? Like you're starting to do that. Do you run and put it out there or do you just consider, do you consider throwing it out there under the table every time? Like this is going to drive some things underground. And I think it's going to be very difficult for Wizards of the Coast to try and uh, stop this everywhere. Uh, we already saw with the proxy matter where Wizards of the Coast took down a site that was promoting how to make proxies for Magic the Gathering. So because of that, this is kind of where that's a where it makes it, is it enforceable? I'm not even sure. Fundraising, we don't object to you crowdfunding your license work, but we need to address concerns about overreaching and preventing the funding of infringing products. Because of that, the section is very specific on requirements. And if you're planning of crowdfunding, you must read this whole section carefully and be fully compliant with A, you crowdfund provided. You will only crowdfund a production of licensed work. No infringing materials are given out as perks and rewards, meaning you can't give out something that has the logo, any of their logos, any of their actual copyrighted trademarked material in the stretch goals for fundraising. Kind of makes sense. It's kind of boilerplate stuff at that point, meaning if you have a stretch goal, it has to be your own creations, not theirs. Your entire ca campaign, including stretch goals, is considered one project for the purpose of the royalty threshold. If your campaign raises 750000 and one or more, you pay royalties on that last dollar. Because the product you are crowdfunding exceeds the $750,000 revenue threshold, that said, revenue for any add-on material that backers separately pur purchase are not considered qualifying re revenue unless the add-on is also licensed work. Uh, some examples may help make this clearer. This example throws everything of this document out the, it, it makes me wonder if this document was even real or if this is a complete and utter troll. Brunor Battleaxe, a character from the Dritz series by our, a Salvador. He is the dwarf 
that makes, uh, what is it, uh, Wolfgar's hammer at one point, pretty much makes Thor's hammer in the in, in RA's work, uh, for the most part. It's a homing, returning, throwing hammer that he throws, hits people, it comes back. Throw, offer of Throwing Blades, a 5th edition source book, and Blocking Blades, a 5th edition campaign, made a lot of money on those publications last year. Given how well Throwing Blades did, Bruner decides to crowdfund and crowdfund for Blades 2 Electric Boogaloo? Why in the world would this be in here? So I'm going over to know your meme because Electric Boogaloo is a whole meme. It, it, this is this is why I do pop culture and I sit there and I go, why in the world would they throw that in this document? It's a meme. It, it throws everything out that this document's even real. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm I'm just questioning it because this is a leak. This is a leaked document that has come out onto the market. You have to question all the leaks because we have seen up and down people continue to leak stuff from Wizards of the Coast. We've seen cards in Magic the Gathering get leaked that aren't real. Boogaloo was a phrase for uh, a title of a TV series. It was a production of Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo. It was just, people got sick and tired of it. And then the meme went and continued on. It's something that Will Wheaton's used. But it the, the bigger thing here is the related meme of a Boogaloo or a Boog is a slang term often used by libertarians and anchor capitalists to describe an uprising against the government or left-wing politic opponents referring to a civil war to electric boogaloo online memes using this phrase are typically circulated among gun enthusiast groups and forums it's a very strange strange thing to make a nod at in this leaked document and it throws everything i've read here in contention i'm sorry that there is not something that would normally go in this type of document from Wizards of the Coast. This is a complete and utter uh, sidestep. It's not normal for Wizards of the Coast to throw something like this in there. This video's gone on long enough, and that last particular really makes me question the legitimacy of the leak. Yes, it went through Gizmodo. Yes, there's other people that have put this out there. I believe it was Roll for Combat. Uh, originally was the ones that gave it to them. I think that's what, it, what I read. I don't know for sure. I've seen leaks from Magic the Gathering cards that look 100% legit, and then they come out as fake. This could be Wizards of the Coast throwing this out there, testing the waters. This could be a psyop for the D&D movie that's about to come out. I, I, like I said, I question the legitimacy. There's certain things in the wording of this. If the legality is even there, uh, I know lawyers are going to be going over this very soon and uh, possibly live streaming it. So I, I, I do want to look into that. <sighs> that one thing, it, it, it's bugging me. And my gut reaction when things like that bug me, I it, it makes me really question when things are legitimate. Anyway, guys, this video has been long enough. If you've liked what you've watched here, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this out there because I, for one, hope this is, this is not the case. I think this is far overreaching and I, I really hope Wizards of the Coast can backtrack on this and maybe throw in something there and they, they have some legitimacy here now to say this is fake. So we'll have to wait to see what comes out of this. We know there is an agreement coming up and there is a scary tactic with that. So I, for one, believe there is some stuff in here that is legitimate, but that example being it from a known character with the Dritz series from R.A. Salvador and then them making it out to be a meme that is about a government uprising in the long run. That's what it's been known more so now than it used to be. It makes me wonder the legitimacy of this and I have to question it. I hope. I just hope that this uh, this whole open gaming license will settle down and we can move on and continue doing normal things and normal content with our lives. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I was your proud Canadian Phoenix Center Chat.